now you're on the verge of camp almost. I just, yeah, I can do that. Really well, and what you have expected? Well, um, you know, I think every camp's different, and you always set out with the mindset of accomplishing or what your priorities are in camp. I think we've done that to this point. Um, we're not a work or we're not a finished product by any means. There's some work to do. But what I really enjoyed about our team is um, is the mindset and, and the mentality that they've displayed uh, for, for that matter before camp even started by coming early and being together and working on their game on their own time. Uh, and then they've carried that into training camp here where we've tried to use each day as a day to get better. Um, we've addressed certain parts of our game, not every part just yet. We still have a few days left before opening night, but I think uh, today was a key day and it's going to set us up for uh, an important last preseason game to try and make sure we're continuing to iron some kinks out in our game. When you go into this last preseason game and some, some young men are you know, looking for new characters, do you have sort of an idea of this is what I think I'm going to do, but they might play themselves out of your decision, or are you kind of open-minded here the last game and say, okay, let's see what we do? Yeah, I, I think um, as a... Uh, for, speaking for myself, but I'll speak for our coaching staff. We pride ourselves on being open-minded and never being uh, held prisoner to a decision that was made beforehand. So we, we take a lot of pride in evaluating what's going on, what the players are showing us. We, we like to say they give us real-time information. And, um, you know, I think the way things play out or shake out is, is based on, on what we're seeing. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm quite happy with the work rate of every player in camp. Um, but tomorrow's the last preseason game, so it's the last opportunity for some people to make an impression. Does Lane Peterson come as advertised? Nice school for him last night. Well, for Lane, you know, I, I got to see him and coach against him in the American League quite a bit, so I had an understanding of his skill set. Um, I thought, you know, one of the things about him is he's got a real heavy shot and can shoot in stride, and um, he made good on that that breakaway opportunity off their turnover last time. How do you balance um, like information that you get because there's so much of it, and then seeing what you see? Are is... you asking me a Toronto Blue Jays no, question? I, well, <laughs> kind of, but not really. But you must get into situations like that too. Then you, you get information, and, but. But you're watching, right? So you're yeah. trying to balance both and make the right Yeah, I, I think for me, and this is uh, just for me, um, I'm a collector of information. And there's different types of information. There's numbers and spreadsheets and um, analytic-type information. Then there's information from human intelligence, talking to players, talking to coaches. And then there's the real-time uh, information that players are showing you and, and I think part of the art of um, coaching at this level is to disseminate what is most important to give your team a sense of true north and um, you know uh, that's what that's what we try and do and that that goes into decisions we make on the bench in between periods after games heading into practices um, that's what we do as an organization so Jay, did you envision? Sorry, Rob. Did yeah. you envision having eleven defensemen here? How much of it's a byproduct of Ekholm and Kulak situations, and how much of it's a, a result of, of maybe some surprising play uh, from a couple of guys that were envisioned to be part of that? Part and parcel. Yeah, I would agree that it's it's a little bit of both. We have some uh, bumps and bruises and nicks, and the other thing is that other people have played well, and so. They're, they're fighting for positioning, not only to make the Edmonton Oilers, but to maybe be the first call-up. Uh, we've liked what we see. We think we're deep on the back end. Obviously, um, you know, we want the players that you mentioned to be brought into our, our program here. And they had both of them had good days. I thought it was a good sign that Marcus Niemelainen was with the group today. Uh, so we're trending in the right direction in terms of uh, the health side for us. So, uh, uh, Broberg and Ekholm, you know, there was talk that they were going to be, uh, you guys were going to take yep. a look at them. That can't happen now. So, how does that impact how you start the season? Can you just roll that out on day one, even though they haven't been together? Or? 
Maybe. Uh, those are those are all the things that we're we're gonna have to put our every brain in the game, so to speak, with our managers, our coaches, and figure out what's gonna give us the best chance to win on on game one versus Vancouver. Everything and every option is on the table. So a lot of attention is on the young guys and the spots. What do you see out of your veterans like Kane, Newton, Hawkins, Drysaddle, and how much stock do you put in what you see in a, in a preseason? Yeah. I, well, that's a good question because you know they've been there, they've been there, done that. You know they're trying to prepare themselves uh, for their regular season. Everyone wants to get out of the gate individually well and collectively well. I think um, you know these exhibition games, heading into the last exhibition game, it, it's an opportunity for everybody, including the coaches and the team as a whole, to take inventory of where they're at. Uh, inventory of where our team game's at, inventory of areas that might need a little bit of extra attention, but also for our individual players, I think it's an opportunity for our individual players uh, to take inventory of where their personal game's at. And everybody's at a different spot right now. In the end, we want people feeling good heading into game one when it really counts against Vancouver. Jay, to follow up on that, your veteran group, it's entering the third week of the preseason now. How do you keep it fresh for them so that their you know, singular thought isn't, let's get this going? Yeah, well, I think th there's been a lot of thought in terms of practice planning. So you guys have been here every day. I don't think we've run the same drill once. Um, so that's important. Uh, we've brought new ideas, fresh ideas. We've uh, tried to innovatively get our point across. Um, those are the ways that you keep it fresh, but in the end, your core values or your core principles are your core principles. It's about making sure that we get a good day's work in, we take care of the business of the day, and uh, make sure that we're embracing that mindset to get better. And if we do that, regardless of if you're uh, 36 years old like Derek Ryan or your uh, young, young uh, pro like Dylan Holloway, I think when you do that, um, there's joy in the journey for everybody.